All right, this is a case of a 68-year-old female who had recent trauma to teeth 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And they've noticed a fistula between teeth 6 and 7. We have some intraoral radiographs we can look at as well. We have the panoramic, or the uh, cone beam CT right here. And we're trying to identify the source of the fistula seen between 6 and 7. I initially looked at this and it, you don't see much bone loss. Unfortunately, we have some some posts here. Here's a metal post in number seven, causing a lot of scattered artifact. Uh, and in hindsight, and in looking at the periapicals, you can see a little bit of bone loss right in this area. I mean, even though it's all dark because of the artifact, most of this is caused by artifact. If you really compare it to the bone around it, I do see a little bit of well-defined hypodense region right there which corresponds perfectly with the periapical radiographs. But really the question is, is one of these teeth fractured, particularly seven, because you look at this in certain views and you see a little line extend through the dentin. Uh, here's a fiber post, I believe that's what this is. And it may help if you turn down the contrast and the brightness, so there's brightness down and contrast. not quite blinded by the, the metal artifacts and, and the dense things around it. So it does look like there's a line that extends through the dent in this tooth. The question is, is that a true fracture of the tooth or is it artifact? And does it line up perfectly to here? We see a little bit of bone loss. Let me get rid of these crosshairs a little bit. That area of bone loss, that hypodensity is actually a little bit coronal to where this hypodense line that appears to be a fracture through tooth number six extending mesially. One thing you can do is line up the tooth in adjacent planes, and that's what people usually recommend. But I want to line up that artifact. So I drag my crosshairs here to where the artifact is. Let's look at it in the axial view. Right there's where that line is. So let's line it up coronally too. We'll have kind of an oblique or maybe more of a sagittal view. So I'd like to see this all in one slice if possible. So what I want to do is line up the tip of each of the posts in this oblique view. I believe that's where the line is. Let's go back and line up our crosshairs with tooth number six. And look at this in the different views that we have. So this is our oblique view where we've lined everything up. There, it really just looks like artifact to me. I mean, you can look in certain slices and certain views where things are off, but you see this horizontal artifact extending from the apex of that post. And for me, it's tough to say that that is indeed a fracture, even though, you know, if I were trying to make it look like a fracture, I could. Let's go back to our original, and if you just happen to caption it in a certain slice where you only see the, the horizontal artifact line going through the dentin of that tooth like I showed you before that does look like a fracture but you need to be careful and as I've gone back to orienting the planes parallel with the fracture line and here we can see orthogonal to that or what looked like a fracture line you can see that what I still think is artifact just burrowing through the dentin of that tooth. So it looks more like a canal than it does look like a fracture. Then it continues onward until it reaches the apex of this post in number seven. So I'll always say the metal artifacts are the Achilles heel of cone beam CT. This is one reason why it just really obscures everything in the region. Let me show you the periapicals of this case as we pull these up now. 
so this is the original one. That radial lucency on the bone is a lot more apparent in the periapical. We have number six, number seven, and it does look like there's some PDL widening of that tooth. Uh, tooth number seven looks fine, although the radial lucency overlaps the roots of both teeth. And here, more recently, they traced it with a gutta percha. And clearly you see that gutta percha does trace right to the the root of that tooth. And that, that radial lucency, like I said, it is a little bit inferior to where we saw the what looked like a fracture, which was a, an artifact extending through the dentin. Here's an, another early one just from a, a different angle. The radial lucency not nearly as, a, as apparent as it was in the, the more mesially angled radiograph. So always good to have multiple angulations. Uh, of course now we have the comb beam CT and we know where the fish oil is draining so we know this was buckle but you could do the buckle object rule and determine where this was coming from. Uh, another thing I would mention, a couple reasons I was reluctant to call this a fracture. You know, first of all they said recent trauma. For a fistula to develop it, it's going to take months for that bone to resorb from an infectious process. And then the other thing, with, so this was a true fracture line in the tooth, it looks fairly large. And it does have to be fairly large to be able to visualize in a cone beam CT. Usually what you look for are signs of bone loss around it, which we don't see at least right in that area. But if you had a fracture that large, I would think at least in one of these periapicals it would show up. You have higher definition in periapical imaging than you do in cone beam CT, unfortunately. Of course, there's always trade-offs. You have overlap of structures here. It's hard to see where things are in relation to others, and some things can be hidden because we don't have a 3D view. But there are still advantages to intraoral radiography. As you see, this is a lot higher definition. You don't have that scatter artifact. That's another big advantage. But I would hope to, to see that fracture. Of course, you can be at an off angle to where the x-rays project through the tooth. But with, with a fracture that big, I would hope to see more signs than what we see here. Here I don't see anything in this immediate area where I would expect to, be to see that fracture. And this is where I would expect to see the bone loss if I had bone loss coming from a fracture rather than down here when the bone loss actually exists. So I don't think it's a fracture, at least not there than it looks like in the cone beam CT. So what do I think? I think it's likely missed accessory canal that projects off to the side. And I'm guessing it's been there or it's been in the process of developing for some time. Like I said, I don't think this is something that's popped up due to the recent trauma. You know, maybe that helped unroof a fistula or a sinus tract that was all already developing there. But I don't think that there's a fracture to this tooth that immediately caused this bone loss. Anyway, feel free to leave comments, uh, send me emails, suggestions. Let me know if you agree with me or not. Right now this tooth has not been extracted. I can't say 100% one way or the other. You know, we do our best judgment with what we have, with the imaging we have available. And we pool our resources with the radiologist who looks at lots of combi CTs. Of course, the clinician's experience dealing with a patient clinically, that's going to give a lot more information that I'm not necessarily privy to. So the more you make your radiologist aware of your findings and your impressions, the better off we'll both be. And it's always a team effort. You know, it's always the clinician and the radiologist, uh, possibly a surgeon, whatever other specialist gets involved that will lead to the best diagnosis and the best treatment of these patients. So take care. Hope to see you next time.